Hey everybody, welcome back to FSI DFS, looking at the July 5th 12 game main slate for Friday. A bunch of games that might have some rain concerns, I don't think anything's getting postponed, uh, but there might be some delays uh, kind of across the board. Cleveland, Atlanta, looks like Boston, New York game could also maybe get a little touch of a sprinkle or a delay. Again, I don't think anything's going to get postponed, but just monitor right up until lock, uh, like the radar, and seeing if there's going to be... Um, any concern with the pitchers in those games. Uh, with the 12-game slate, we got a lot of teams, a lot of starting pitchers. Uh, I think there is a whole lot of options kind of at all the tier levels. Like, it's, it's really, really uh, loaded. In, in my opinion. Uh, so yeah, let's just kind of dive right in. We got the sheet. Uh, we'll look at that in a little bit, but for now, let's just look at the top pitchers. Glass now, clear cut top of the board in terms of salary, 10.8K. Uh, Matchup against Milwaukee is not exactly what you want to see for a pitcher who's priced this high, uh, but still the strikeout upside that Glass now provides is second to none, essentially, uh, especially on this board. Absolutely got rocked in his last start out I'm just kind of throwing that out the board. I'm not too concerned with that at all. He's still capable of getting you 10 or more strikeouts. At this salary price tag, though, if you want to kind of like justify how much you want to pay, at 10.8K, you're looking for somebody who can get you around 27 DK points or more. Can he get you that? Absolutely. We know this guy's ceiling is, you know, 35 to 40 DK points. Uh, but still, 27 DK point as a floor, can you get that? Can he pay off that salary? Who knows? I think he's still going to be my favorite pitcher in this top tier. But I could also see uh, Tanner Bybee being right there as well. And I could see him being ranked as like the favorite pitcher uh, in this higher salary tier. Just because he's so much cheaper. 1600 in savings can go a long way. And he also has that strikeout upside. And we've been seeing it the past couple of starts. Um or past handful of starts from him. He's got that upside at 9.2, 2.5x salary. It's kind of like what I I I use to see if like the, the value is there for him. So at 9.2K, can he get me around 21 to 24 DK points? Yes. Do So do I trust Bybee to get me 20 two DK points more than I trust Glass now to get me 27 to 29 DK points? Oh, that's kind of the question that you got to ask yourself. Uh, obviously, Glass now gives you a little bit of a higher upside. Bybee has a little bit of a better matchup facing off against San Francisco here. This is one of the games, though, where you have to be monitoring the weather and seeing is there going to be, you know, some rain heading to this game and causing a mid-game mid delay, like that'd be terrible, uh, obviously, because once that delay starts mid-game, you can pretty much kiss the starter, starting pitcher goodbye. But class now, Bybee, very even uh, in terms of who I would want to rank one or two. After them, it's going to be Lopez. Uh, he's looked awesome in his last two starts. Granted, it was against Oakland and Seattle, uh, two teams that just strike out a heap ton. Um, Houston, they don't strike out as much as the team, but still, they're not scaring me too much. Uh, and I think that Lopez has, you know, a consistent year's worth of data to show that, you know, he's a very, very solid pitcher. After Lopez, Freed, and then kind of like a gap, and then Hauk uh, facing off against the Yankees. Going into the mid-range, I think Reagan's, it's going to be really intriguing to see what the ownership's going to be looking like for Reagan's. He is facing off against Colorado. He is in Coors Field. However, DK really priced down his salary. This is a guy that we were paying close to 10K for uh, over the past month, and now he's dropped down to 8.2 because he's in Coors. And yes, he's in Coors. But still, this is a phenomenal pitcher facing off against a bad offense. I, th I think I think you got to go I think you got to go with Reagan's if you are going down into this mid tier. My guess, and I, you know, I'm not an expert in terms of guessing uh, ownership, but my guess is that people will still see this price tag on this level of pitcher facing off against bad offense and still be going with it. So I do think he's going to be very owned, um, but I, I really don't know if he should be super high owned. Like if you're getting the sense of like the industry is talking about, you know, Reagan's is the guy in the mid tier. 
Obviously, I think I would want to be a little bit more underweight and go with Colorado Bats as like a nice leverage stack in Coors. But if you're seeing that Reagans is not getting much ownership or much traction at all, I would definitely be overweight on Reagans because, yeah, he is facing off against a, a bad Colorado team. And, you know, he does have the talent level of a pitcher who's more in the, you know, 9K, mid 9K range. And we're getting a massive discount tonight massive discount with him here at 8.2 so it's really kind of you know look around kind of see gauge where all the you know where everybody's talking um and, and figure it out from there as whether we want to be overweight or underweight with him after that uh we got gossman gossman's facing off against seattle seattle they strike out a ton we're, we're playing any pitcher that's facing off against seattle at this point in time just because of the strikeout uh upside that he can have and gossman reagan's right next to each other in salary so again if you're thinking about fading reagan's just pivot to gossman uh and go with that nice colorado stack but if you're going to be you know overweight on reagan's maybe you don't have as much interest in gossman or maybe you go with both of them and just really lay into uh some of those top tier bats with all the extra savings that you're going to have um because you're going kind of cheap at pitcher after those two guys, Aaron Nola, you know, upside with him. Uh, but again, there is also a downside with him in that, you know, he's got this crazy high ceiling, but when he's off, he's really off. Um, and it can go south in quite a hurry. Castillo, he's really been struggling. He's been allowing like three to five earned runs almost every single start over the past month. Uh, the strikeouts have not been there either. It is a little bit concerning. And then Cortez, just kind of a leftover um, in this mid-tier. Baz. He's back. He is, but he pitches for Tampa Bay and he's coming off Tommy John surgery. So it's like, how far are they going to let him pitch? Who knows? Uh, he's been kind of all over the place in, ter in the minors. Like he was really struggling for in, the, in the month of May, if you look down here in the analysis. Uh, but then back in June, like this guy has strikeout upside that we need to be interested in uh, in DFS. Facing off against Texas, a lot of these Texas bats have been just ice cold. Uh, Semyon is the first guy that comes to mind. Like, he just can't seem to get anything going uh, recently. But Texas bats have been struggling uh, recently. Baz has the strikeout upside. But again, it's Tampa Bay. They love to just be super careful with their pitchers. Like, is he going to get pulled after 60, 70 pitches? I could totally see it. Like, it would not shock me if Tampa Bay is like... Yeah, you know, you're doing great, but it's the fifth inning and we're, we're pulling you. So uh, that's my that's my main hesitation with Baz here, uh, but I still think he is a fine option. And honestly, I think a lot of these guys in the cheap tier are fine options. Olsen, Suarez, uh, Spears, and Thorpe, I, I could have interest in all of them. If you're going to be building, you know, 20, 50 lineups, I'm going to have interest in a lot of these guys. But if you're only going to be playing three lineups, Definitely stick towards the top and the mid tier, um, and then maybe pick one of these guys uh, from the cheap tier. It is going to be intriguing um, with with Olsen um, and and Spears. I like both of them in a regard, but at the same time, the Vegas over under I think in this game is nine and a half and it's even money line like they're expecting a lot of runs uh, from both of these offenses so I'm not really sure what to expect um, but Vegas is expecting a lot of runs I, so I might be a little bit overweight uh, in my interest in Olsen and Spears uh, but yeah yeah uh, and yeah going towards the bats uh, KC obviously in Coors facing off against Freeland just it, the issue with KC is going to be fitting them in. I mean, all of their salaries just got absolutely juiced up uh, because it's the course factor and everything. Dodgers really like them. I, I think it's going to be Aaron Savali. Uh, for some reason, he's not in the player pool. I think it's because he got traded. Uh, he isn't. No, he's not. Who are they facing off against? Yeah, Savali. What is going on here? It's because he's not probable. That's why. DK Hesem is not probable. I think he is probable. It's chaos. Chaos. My brain is is not there right now. Savali. What? Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Hang on. What is going on? Savali. He got traded. He was on Miami. He's now on Tampa Bay. He was on Milwaukee. He's now on Tampa Bay. 
He was on Tampa. Oh my god. <laughs> he was on Tampa Bay. He's not on Milwaukee. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry. Just cut, delete. None of this ever happened. What an absolute disaster. But I think it's going to be the Dodgers chasing off against Savali, according to MLB.com. Uh, but TK still has them listed as uh, Tampa Bay. I'm not interested, though, at all. I'm going to have a whole lot of interest in the Dodgers badge than in Milwaukee and Tampa Bay. In terms of GPP, it's going to be the teams. Uh, so, like, Texas facing off against Baz. I, I don't see him going super deep into the game. And, you know, he's shown some struggles in the minors. But, like, if he doesn't go in deep into the game, then you get that, you know, awful Tampa Bay bullpen that Texas is going to be able to face off against Atlanta and another GPP team. They take off against Nolan, who, Nola, who can't have that upside, but, you know, can you know, implode as well. And then uh, New York facing off against Tanner Houck. Houck doesn't scare me uh, really at all. And honestly, he's, he's not looked too great. Uh, lately, you can see he's allowing two, three or more earned runs. The strikeouts have definitely dipped over his past handful of starts. Now he has faced off against Toronto and San Diego, two teams that, you know, have lower strikeout rates. But now he's going up against uh, New York, and they don't really strike out at all uh, either. So going to have interest in those New York bats, Atlanta, Texas, the, the teams that have solid offenses and can get up there. Uh, Texas, maybe not as much as with their struggles that they've been having. Uh, but again, if they can get... Uh, if they can chase Baz early and get a lot of that Tampa Bay bullpen, uh, I'm going to be interested in in Texas. And then cheap guys, Cincinnati, Detroit, again, high over under in this game and two cheap offenses. Uh, so going to have interest in that. So, man, I'm still trying to, like, get my brain wrapped around the Savali and the trade and all that stuff. Like, yikes, what a disaster that was. Uh, but you can see where my brain is at. I, I blame the 4th of July holiday and kind of where everything is going. Uh, but good luck in your contest. Thank you for watching. Hopefully this was able to just kind of guide you in the right direction um, with your builds. Thank you as always. Good luck in your contest. We will see you in the next one.